Hello and welcome to Podcast Like It's 1999, the podcast where we talk about the films of 1999 from Alaska here in 2021. I'm one of your hosts, Kenny Nybart. And I'm Philoscope. And with us today is our favorite guest, Nobody, <laughs> which means you get us. We're putting you in limbo, fools. <laughs> it's true. We are. I like that you picked a state. We're like coming from we, well, yeah, just, <laughs> <laughs> the just, lack of specificity is fantastic. I like I, it. We, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I workshopped that with my dogs. <laughs> um, they liked it. Yeah, it, yeah. It's yeah. Well, you know, that uh, that's what this movie is about. It's about, yeah, it's, it's, about, about Alaska. Live, yeah. it's about living in Alaska in the summer. Uh, yeah, and it uh, it's it's you know, it's, it's limbo. It is. It's and, limbo. It's it's the John Sales film. Um, what do you got to say about limbo, Phil? You know, I... I'm not going to do this to you. I'm not going to do this to you. No, no, no. I have, no, plenty, I, I have okay. plenty of good things to say about limbo. Like a I lot of very, very good things to say about limbo. I do so too. I, I liked it, yeah. I, I, I didn't dislike it at all. Um, I, I have not seen enough John Sayles movies. I've seen a, a couple. Um, and he's a very specific type of filmmaker. Um and I, I don't obviously say that in a, in a derogatory sense, but at the same time, um, he's also like a surprising filmmaker. Like he catches you a little bit off guard with sort of what feels like the simplicity of what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Lone Star is a, a masterpiece. Like I think it's yeah, a fucking too. phenomenal movie with yeah. like a kind of pull the rug out from underneath you ending. Um, and this film also keeps you kind of off guard like about an hour into this movie it turns into something drastically dissimilar than what the, the previous hour had kind of set up right um uh lone star came out in 96 it was yeah. nominated for best screenplay uh you know i was 14 i saw that movie in the theaters with my dad i was just Same. getting into uh like indie film i guess you could say i was certainly like you know watching a lot of siskel and ebert and reading a lot of um Entertainment Weekly and Lone Star was, you know, the buzzy film of the moment. Uh, and, and, you know, I think, you know, 96 was also Fargo. 96 was also that whole indie Shine, Oscar Secrets and Lies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Lone Star was was lumped into that a little bit. And I, uh-huh. I'm pretty sure, I mean, you know, outside of Fargo, it was my favorite. I mean, L- Lone Star was, was kind of an amazing cinematic experience. So I, you know, you... The funny thing about John Sales is all his films are kind of uh, the same budget. Yep. Uh, almost Adam McGoyan in that way, right? He makes uh-huh. a lot of films that are kind of are like, you know, four or five million dollars, maybe less. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're weirdly eclectic. Like that's the, the you, th- you think of him off Lone Star in a movie like this. And you think, OK, this guy makes kind of like. You know, Amer- Americana, maybe set in the West, character pieces with a crime element, but but more about dynamics. I mean, I didn't realize until later he'd made Eight Men Out, which I've seen a bunch of times. Uh, Brother from Another Planet is just an unbelievable. He also wrote a lot of things cool that people movie. don't necessarily give him an yeah. association with, too. I mean, he did a re- he he wrote the OG or the original version of E.T. when it was not what it turned into. Um, You know, he did an uncredited rear on Apollo 13. Like to your point, he's very like, um, he's very Americana. You know what I mean? Like he's Mm -hmm. very tapped into the American psyche and the, and sort of American independent cinema uh, in a way that I feel like people, I mean, listen, I don't mean to say people don't give him credit for that. They do. I'm sure there are definitely circles of independent cinema that I'm not tapped into that speak very highly of John Sayles. It just feels as though he never fully, fully broke through. It was like he was on the cusp with Lone Star. He gets the nomination and then just never, you know, really kind of hits the zeitgeist. People like John Sayles. Sure. But John Sayles is nobody's favorite director. Sure. And yeah. John Sales, as far as I know, the story goes, uh, he is a uh, far left liberal college, uh, student college activist, Williams College, um, comes out and puts together a movie called The Return of the Sakakis Seven, mm-hmm. which is uh, the big chill with three years earlier. Mm-hmm. 
And um, it was a really well, well reviewed movie. I never have seen it. I'm very interested in seeing it. It's just, it's literally the big chill. It's a group of you know liberal friends from college meet in a house in New Hampshire, and uh, secrets come out and things come out about their friends and things happen right. over the course of the weekend. Uh, it's been put in the national film registry. It's, oh wow! Um, yeah, no, it really is considered. You know, just I, I had a, never heard of it. I'm an incredible it. independent film. And it launched this guy's career. And then he really went on to have, you know, the kind of career that, I mean, I was just to point out, like, he's a, uh, he's a um, Corman guy, too. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So he goes on to, you know, I mean, the Return of Sakaka 7 costs $30,000 to make, which should give you an idea of what what we're working with. Sure, sure. But he goes on to make um, a bunch of really, really, really well-reviewed movies. Um, He made a movie called Baby, It's You, Liana, The Brother from Another Planet was incredibly Mm well-reviewed. Then he went on to, you know, make movies like Lone Star, Eight Men Out, Passion Fish. Passion Fish, which was a big movie, I remember. Big Oscar movie. Mm -hmm. Secret of Rhone, Inish, which is about uh, seal people. Sure. And uh, and I wanted to kind of highlight that and Brother from Another Planet Mm -hmm. because... Even though he's an independent filmmaker, even though he's generally working on small budgets, mm-hmm. he has never shied away from these kind of wild uh, fantasy science fiction ideas um, and been able to use those ideas as a lens through which to talk about modern society from his particular position as a, uh, you know, as as a reformed radical yeah. you know a, a, that's really what it seems like he is like a, a reformed radical and hangs out with a lot of those people i mean mm-hmm. there are a few in this movie like chris christopherson um but uh you know steve earl is in his play, group of players and chris cooper is in his group of players and just seems to have like you know a group of people who would you know who would who would essentially do anything for him but as i said i do think it is weird Yep. that he never had that Fargo moment. He never had that, you know, most of our independent filmmakers like this. I mean, look at 96. Yep. You have the Coens who, you know, did over a decade of really, really great, really well-reviewed stuff that never quite broke through until Fargo. You had Mike Lee who did really, really great stuff, really, really well-reviewed stuff that never really broke through the way Secrets and Lies did. Um, and it happened over and over and over again throughout the 90s, but Sales just never was able to kind of get his whole head above the sur- the ab- above the surface. I mean, it's I, I, I fully agree with you. And I think it's really interesting that, you know, we talked about Lone Star earlier. And, you know, if, if our listeners haven't watched Lone Star, watch Lone Star. It's a fucking great movie. Anybody would like that movie. It's a great, it's a great, great movie. And and what's interesting with, is with, that... With a, just a great cast. Oh, I mean, Matthew McConaughey, Chris Cooper. I mean, it's, it's a great Chris Chris Offerson. Like, it's a really, really good movie. Um, and it's the type of movie that you know, connected with people. And rather than taking that as an opportunity to try to either create a more mainstream movie or to do something along those lines, he makes a movie called Men With Guns, which I haven't seen. Which is it? Do you know what it's about? I do know what it's about, uh, and I'll, I'll just for the, for the for our listeners, it's it's set in an unnamed Latin American country. It's a story of one man's discovery of what actually happened in the political history of his nation, as well as his students. It was filmed in Mexico, and most of the crew were Mexican. Um, it was it, it to me is a perfect example of of him being like. I'm doubling down. I'm doing what I want to do. And mm-hmm. I'm not going to let this opportunity pass me by to try to connect with people on stuff they might not know about. And it's it's a bold move on his part. And it's, I think, speaks to perhaps, you know, why his career has been what it has been. 